Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today we will be producing glycerol through the transesterification of triglycerides found in vegetable oil. We will only be needing some vegetable oil, methanol, and sodium hydroxide for this project. Methanol can be found as methyl hydrate, and sodium hydroxide can be purchased as lye or drain cleaner. Both can be found at hardware stores. To begin, we can add around 700 milliliters of vegetable oil to a round bottom flask and load it in our homemade heating mantle that we made in a previous video. Next, we can begin to heat the vegetable oil to around 50 degrees Celsius. And in the meantime, we can prepare a solution of 10 grams of sodium hydroxide and 200 milliliters of methanol. This can then be added to the flask. At the time of recording, I did not have a heating mantle that could stir solutions magnetically, so every now and then, the flask is vigorously shaken to mix everything up. Ideally, strong magnetic stirring would be used to uniformly mix everything. Thankfully, this mixture emulsifies pretty easily. A thermometer was used to monitor the temperature, and it was held constant around 50 degrees Celsius for an hour to allow everything to react. Triglycerides consist of three fatty acids bound together by a glycerol backbone. The sodium hydroxide acts as a catalyst for this reaction by removing a proton from the methanol and making it more nucleophilic. For simplicity, we will condense the triglyceride and replace most of it with R groups. The carbonyl carbon of the triglyceride reacts with the deprotonated methanol to give a tetrahedral intermediate, which then proceeds to the transesterified product. The deprotonated glycerol then deprotonates a water molecule to regenerate the hydroxide and form 1OH on the glycerol. This occurs three times for the triglyceride to yield methyl esters of the fatty acids and a glycerol molecule. Essentially, a transesterification reacts one alcohol with an ester to form a different alcohol and a different ester. The methyl esters produced can actually be used as biofuel, which is pretty cool. After an hour of heating, the heating mantle was turned off and the solution was allowed to cool. The air temperature was quite chilly, so after fully cooling, the upper methyl ester layer actually became gelatinous. This is expected as biodiesels gelify at higher temperatures than normal diesel, which is one of the challenges that biodiesel faces. The gelified methyl esters were strained off, and the remaining liquid was transferred into a separate beaker. The liquid section was then transferred into a separatory funnel, and it was left for a few hours to fully settle. Once fully settled, around 300 milliliters of the darker lower liquid was collected. The upper layer also consists of methyl esters and began gelifying as it sat. The dark lower layer still contains the sodium hydroxide from earlier, so some concentrated hydrochloric acid was added to acidify the mixture and precipitate out sodium chloride. Hydrochloric acid can be purchased from hardware stores as muriatic acid. After allowing it to settle, there were two layers present. The lower aqueous layer was retained and filtered to clear up the solution. This layer should contain the glycerol. The lower layer was then evaporated until only the glycerol remained. Unfortunately, the glycerol was heavily contaminated with impurities from decomposition, so we'll have to clean it up. First, the viscous mixture was filtered over a few hours. After filtering the glycerol, 100 milliliters of methanol was added to lower the viscosity. Then some activated charcoal was added to remove some of those colored impurities. The activated charcoal successfully removed some of the color, and the solution had a neutral pH, indicating no more acid was present, as expected. The methanol was boiled off, and then the glycerol was added to a simple distillation apparatus to perform a vacuum distillation. A vacuum aspirator pump was used to pull a vacuum on the apparatus, and the glycerol distilled over around 204 degrees Celsius. This is significantly lower than the atmospheric boiling point of 290 degrees Celsius, which is great. In total, we received around 10 milliliters of glycerol. Unfortunately, some of the impurities still carried over, however, the product is much more pure than before the vacuum distillation. The glycerol will be used in a future project to produce some nitroglycerin, and also in the conversion of orthophenylenediamine to phenanthrolene, so keep an eye out for those projects. Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in a future project. Okay, bye. 